Hi there and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. In this video I'll be doing a quick overview of display concepts and how to display various elements with the UI flow interface. Screens in the devices we use are made up of lots of tiny little dots that we call pixels. These are arranged in horizontal, X and vertical, Y. So to display something on the screen First we need to know how big is the screen. The screen of the M5 stack is 320 pixels by 240 pixels. The point in the top left corner of the screen is called the origin. This is absolute zero and this is where we start to count each pixel by pixel. The text that I've placed is about 30 pixels in on the X axis and 30 pixels down on the Y axis. If I wanted it to appear in the middle of the screen, I would just divide the number of pixels by half. Now let's get started with the UI flow interface. First, we're going to focus on the elements in the UI editor. Above the M5 screen, we can see a bunch of icons. Drag from the label, you'll see a text appear. If we click on that text, we can see a bunch of parameters first is name. It's important to name things correctly so that we know how to control them later. Here we have those X and Y coordinates we talked about. I want to put it at 30 X and 30 Y. And now if I want to I can choose the color. When we're designing a UI it's important to think that we should choose a color that can easily be seen on a black background. The next box is where we put the text that's going to be in our message. So I'm going to put here the name and then my name Luke and then underneath I can choose the font. Fonts are diff different ways of showing text. By default we only have a couple of fonts because these fonts need to be stored in the flash memory of M5 stack. If we want to add our own fonts we can use some online converters. I'll put a link down in the description of where we can find these. I can even rotate the text if I want but I'm not going to need it for this project so I'll just set it to zero. Below we have the layers we won't need to worry about layers just yet, but if we start to have a lot of elements here, we'll need them. Now let's continue to add more text elements. Okay, now that looks about done, but I'm going to start by adding some kind of logo. We can do this with some primitive shapes, like the circle for instance. We can see again the x, y coordinates, but this time we have radius. We can show how big the circle will be. I'm going to keep it at the default value. Then this time we have two colors. So the first color sets the border of the circle. And then the second will set the interior of the circle. I think that I'm going to keep both of these white. And so I'll just go back and set them both to white. It's up to you what you choose to do with your colors. Now I'm going to try and make a simple logo. I'm a big fan of dogs, so I'm going to make a dog paw. It's something quite simple with some simple circles. Just I'll have to make the last one a little bit bigger. So we go into radius and then change it. That looks a little bit big, but it can be a big paw. Now all of these elements that we've programmed here on the card, we can control with coding blocks. You'll see in the UI section label and circle panels are now appeared. So if I drag a block in here I could change the name tab if I wanted to. It won't change in the design editor or the UI editor but it will change when I start to run the program on my M5 Go. You can see here other blocks where we could change the color, the position and many other things. Let's have a look at what blocks we have for the circle. So I think this circle for the port is a little bit big. 
So I'm going to drag this block in here and make sure it sets the last circle that I created to a lower value so that port is not so big. We could also use the rect element, place it at the bottom and then make it the width of the screen to create a banner across the bottom. So I'm going to call it banner and then change the width to uh, to to 320. Okay, and then I'll change it to a red color. The other element that we have here is the title, which we can just snap one down there on the top. And then lastly, we have image. So this image is just a placeholder for now. If we click on it, we can see the image name, its coordinates, and then files. These files are located in the flash memory of your device. We can upload them using UIFlow's upload function. Then once we do that, they appear in the list. So we can go here to add image. We can delete images. You'll see what images I already have there. But notice, if I try to put one too big in, it will warn me that it has to be below 25 kilobytes. That might seem quite restrictive, but remember we only have a minimal amount of flash memory on the M5 Go. Now if I choose my image from the list, set it, and then I can program it with these image blocks here. We could always use this to create some sort of animation or slideshow of pictures by using these image blocks that change what image is displayed. So just an example of this I can set a timer to uh, so the code will initially show this face image and then it will change to the error message picture that is also in the flash system. There we go. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you have any comments, any suggestions, if you get stuck at all, make sure to leave a comment. Make sure you subscribe and like, and then I'll see you in the next video. Bye.